my neighbors slashed my tires and I'm about to sign them up for every mailing list I can think of. What are small legal ways you have gotten back at someone that has wronged you? I'd ask them why they went through all the trouble of calling a tow truck and slashing tires. When they could have very simple just asked you to move your car. They might just be assholes. My neighbors have been cutting down trees branches all over their property and letting them fall on my side so they don't have to clean it themselves. Some people are just total assholes. About 9 years ago. Someone convinced our elderly office manager to get lightning insurance billed to each of our 6 business lines at $9.95 slash month. They totally strong armed her into doing it. 2. From what she said. I called the company's 800 number at 6 p.m. to complain. But it was after hours and all they had was a recording that they were closed. I did. However. Notice that the recording repeated forever instead of playing once and hanging up. I took all 6 voice lines. 2 fax lines. And 4 cell phones and called the 800 number and let the line sit on hold every night for a week. While racking up an absolute fortune for the company on their toll free line. Fuck those guys. Have them audited by eyes. Report them to the city for code violations. Go out each night while they're sleeping and coat their lawn with weed color. Wait till their window is down on their car and slide a dead fish under the driver's seat. Call the I. C. E. On them and report that they're hiding illegal aliens in their basement. Sign them up for jury duty. Call every Jehovah Witness you can find and tell them you'd like to hear more about Jesus Christ and give your neighbor's address. Put out flyers for a rave on the college campus and put your neighbor's address. Put hundreds of ads on Craigslist for Camaros, Corvettes, and just any highly desirable vehicles you think people would want and give them your neighbor's phone number. Every time you pass a fax machine, set it to fax their regular phone line over and over and over again until it gets through. Every night rearrange their lawn ornaments. Take a soap stick and write on their back glass lines from the Batman movies like you know how I got these scars. Wait till they leave and then take bullet hole stickers and put them all over their door and outside windows like there was a drivery. Wait till they have lots of guests and then go out and paint their curb red for no parking and then call the city and have everyone towed. Wait till you find them leave their window down on their car and take an expensive perfume his wife doesn't wear and spray her headrest and seatbelt and watch T domestic troubles begin. That is all I got. If I were in the ARPS position I would pretend that I had not collected the car yet, and hence did not know about the tires. I would go to see the neighbors and apologize for parking in front of their gate. I would say that I understand how frustrating it can be and I'm sorry that they had to arrange for it to be towed. I would then say goodbye and try to get into the conversation the fact that you are just about to go to collect your car. At this stage they will, hopefully, realize that you are a decent person. And accept the situation. However they will also realize that you are about to find out that they slashed your tires. Which will put them in an awkward position. And possibly be rather embarrassing. This will probably result in them avoiding you in future and trying not to bother you in any way out of awkwardness. That said, I am British. We love a bit of social awkwardness. I was at a party with some friends. A girl I was semi thinking of dating I knew she was interested in me spent most of the night being a bitch to pretty everyone that came her way. After watching her show her true colors long enough I told her off and left. She spent the next few day obsessively texting and calling me at all times of the day leaving insulting. Racist and crude messages. I only responded once to a text to say that she please stop. After about 3 days I basically had enough so I set up my phone to text her automatically every 5 minutes. I also wrote a program to send her an email every 15 minutes and randomly called her from different numbers at odd hours. When she finally had enough and asked me to stop I told her I would only do so when after she called and apologized and texted me a copy of her apology. After she gave me her apology she never called me back. It was petty but I worked. I once had a tenant who turned into a real doucher bag. He was a law student and would constantly misquote the landlord tenant's laws. When he had originally moved in, we had agreed that we both would be responsible for snow removal. After a few talks with him regarding the level of noise he used to have, blasting rock music at 3am. 
he decided it was now my responsibility to take care of the snow removal by myself. He would send me emails and texts all day threatening to take me to the landlord tenants board. After a large snowfall. I decided to shovel the snow for him. He used to ride his bike to school every day, yes even in the snow. I buried his bike in about 5 feet of snow. Because the way the weather is up here. After a few hours the snow turned as hard as rock. And he was forced to take the bus to school for the rest of the semester. Do your neighbors even know it was your car? Do you know your neighbors? No point getting petty with them if they will automatically assume it is you that has arranged annoying deliveries. You were in the wrong. Imagine how pissed off you would be if someone had blocked your drive on Thanksgiving Eve and you couldn't get out to go shopping or pick up relatives. You should go and apologize and make peace. If they are the sort to slash tires do you really want them as enemies that live next door? One time an ex-friend borrowed $500. Of course he doesn't pay me. Welches. Avoids calls emails etc. So this guy always parked on the street, lived in a nice part of town. So in the cold winters after my buddies and I left the bar. Being the DD I'd take everyone for food. Since most of the guys needed to take a piss I'd usually take a pit stop at the Welsh's house and my mates would urinate all over his car. It'd freeze all over his car. Also, since I didn't think that was enough punishment, we rented the exact same model and color vehicle as the Welsher. Put his plates on the rental and would deliberately drive through intersections with red light cameras and get him ticketed. Afterwards we'd put his plate back on. That was amazing. We were careful and did this at like 3am but he must have got around $3000 in traffic violations. Felt great. Slightly different. But in college when we got the hundreds of credit card applications in the mail we would fill the prepaid envelopes with rocks and send them back. The post office would charge them for the extra weight. One time we taped one to a cinder block. The mailman told us technically he wasn't supposed to take it. But did anyway because he thought it was funny. I did the exact thing you are planning to do. But to an ex-buddy of mine who was trying to make my friends alienate me. He lived with his dad so I reckon he had a lot of explaining to do when there turned out to be free dildos. Lube. Weight loss. Wear removal products etc in his mail. The way I did it was that I had his phone. House number. Address and his email. Then I joined like 30 surveys and free product stuff on the internet with his name. When he finally found out it was me he said he would tell the cops on me cause this was illegal cause it turns out that some free products are only free the first time then they send you a new one and a bill. D. Nothing ever happened to me but gained the respect of my friends. There was a guy at the bank that was trying to charge me for something that I never had. It got pretty out of hand with him calling me at all hours and telling my friends I was a deadbeat. I found out his email address and signed him up on all the extreme gay sites I could find and registered on the forums and carried on conversations in his name. It got so bad that a guy came all the way from Texas to see him. One day I casually asked him about his visitor and I have never had any trouble from him again. A few years ago the crazy neighbors called the cops on my uncle. They said he was taking pictures of their children, he didn't own a camera and he sure as huck wouldn't be taking pictures of kids if he did, and that he was making death threats and stalking them. At this point he didn't even know the neighbor's name. My uncle dealt with everything legally and it was found that he wasn't doing any of the things that they claimed, duh. That summer he put their compost right next to the neighbor's yard. Whoops. If you google slash tires sunset hollywood. This thread is right near the top of the charts. Which means you shouldn't do anything that will start a feud unless you're sure they don't know how to google. You've just admitted to committing identity theft. So if your neighbors have friends on the police force you could end up with cops tracking you down from your Reddit account. Not to mention a civil case if they're angry and rich enough. And hell. You don't even know for sure it was your neighbors. It could have been the assholes who towed your car. And you already met the towing people. So you know those guys are assholes. I'm just guessing at that. Because they always are. In a small town you might find a nice mechanic running a truck on the side. But in bigger cities the impound industry is full of scum and psychopaths who love to fuck people over and then charge them exorbitant fees for it. Close bracket. So I would approach them. 
Ask if they did this. See what they say. Go from there. Or just let it go. Okay. Try this. You take bird seed and put it in sugar water so it gets sticky. Then you throw it on one of their cars. It's LA. So there will be pigeons around. The car will be absolutely covered in bird shit. You don't even have to be in a big city. I know somebody who did it here in Podunk SC and there were enough pigeons. Use the forces of nature against them. Okay. So here's what you do. You're gonna go to a hardware store and buy nails that are long enough to puncture the wall of the tire. Next. Sneak over at night and wedge one nail at an angle behind each tire of their car. Wake up extra early the next morning. Make an amazing breakfast and be patient. When they back the car out of the driveway to leave for work. Your ears will be filled with the angelic melody of hissing air and furious profanities. Enjoy your breakfast. Newly seasoned with the tears of your enemies. In an area where you are sporting fences. Thus no apartment complex of some sorts with thousands of flats. It wouldn't have hurt if your neighbors would have. Instead of slashing your tires and calling the towing company. Just ask their adjacent neighbors including you if it was their car parked in front of the driveway and if it could be removed. Please. Why are you people trying to fuck each other the hardest way possible? I. And no one in my street would consider this course of action and neither I nor my neighbor are of any Canadian descent. Because common courtesy respectability to handle such things? You are entering the neighbor war games. I was drafted when I was in my early teens in my neighborhood and reigned supreme in each battle. The battle of the cars was very much like your battle of the driveway. My battle plan at the time was this. My dad hunted on occasion and had a large bottle of skunk essence obtain one. My grandmother was diabetic and gave herself shots daily with small syringes obtain one. Hopefully they have a car they're proud enough of that this attack will carry some sting. My neighbors was a new Mercedes. Sneak over at night and stick the syringe through the window where the strip and squirt the skunk essence all over the interior. Do not soak any one spot but sort of spray it all over so that they cannot detect one spot that contains the stench. Do this earlier in the dead of night instead of later, like one instead of four, to allow a good soak and maybe even dry time. The odor is genuinely animal and they will likely not suspect human delivery. I've helped lots of folks in the last 25 years exact the same revenge and in every case. It's ruled that an animal sprayed the vent area near the windshield. BTW. It cannot be removed. Understand this will total their vehicle unless they replace everything you spray carpet. Headliner. Seats. Jute padding. Headliner backing. It's effing awful. My new asshole neighbors cut some bushes that were planted on their side of the fence off at the top of the fence. Leaving a bunch of excess plant matter to die hanging over on my side. I retaliated by severely trimming back all of my trees that were providing shade to their AC units and windows as to heat up their house and cost them money. It'll cost them hundreds. Over a few years. Maybe. Confront them and be extremely kind. Apologize for parking there etc. Ask if they happened to see anyone slash your tires. When they say no mention how it's a shame these hooligans do this sort of thing. And say next thing you know someone's house may be set on fire. Or may get shot or stabbed on the way home and never be caught for it all while staring into their eyes without breaking contact. This will scare the shit out of them. And put them in a fear mode for a while. Also they may not fuck with you again. We once shared a floor in a housing project with a young man who forever endeavored to upset and unsettle anyone and everyone within earshot of his apartment. From screaming matches with his dealer to starting small fires in the hallway. Barely a night went by that we didn't see. Smell or somehow suffer his presence in the building. After an evening which ended with a heroin addled guest of his kicking on every door on the floor before defecating massively in the stairwell. The ladies living to our left decided to do their best to match his superlative douchery. By way of a series of small advertisements posted in the pubs, clubs and pool halls of our town listing his phone number and home address. They ensured a steady stream of human traffic harassing him for months. As I later learned, they'd snipped a snap of a comely lass from the local newspaper, covered her eyes and listed charges for sexual services well below market prices. 
The result was an incessant stream of calls and visitors seeking bargain blow jobs and discount dick teasing after a long evening of drinking. Many of them understandably truculent on discovering that any dong teasing that day would have to be self-inflicted. Not only was it a fair few months before the flow of disappointed punters dried up, but the inclusion of his address led to a visit by a contingent of coppers who came looking for hookers but found a stash instead. That young man went away for a while after that. And when he came back he was as good as gold. TL. DR. Noisy. No good neighbor advertised as escort. Rumbled by the fuzz for drugs. My apartment neighbor let his dog shit its foul shit in the grass in front of our apartments. Not only did it make the grass die everywhere it went, but I could smell it in my second living room. I tried to be discreet. And when management posted letters stating that all dog owners would be charged $25 per pile pickup, I highlighted that line in red and swapped their notice with mine. They started asking all of our neighbors if theirs was highlighted too and they started picking it up. After a few weeks they got lazy again and when no other neighbors were home I came across the foulest shit I've ever seen. I picked it up with some cardboard and slapped it on their door just above their handle. It stuck there for hours and then slowly descended until one of them came home and had to open the door. Okay. Hear what you're going to do. Get yourself a rotisserie chicken from your local grocery store. Have a nice chicken dinner. Maybe invite a girl over. Have a nice bottle of wine and watch a movie. But keep the bones. And the if cut of meat. Then get yourself a nicely sized glass jar. Make sure it's a mason jar. So it's airtight. Next. Put the bones and meat in the jar. And add milk. Maybe an egg for good measure. Voila. Your weapon. Now place this near an air intake in their home. Preferably in a vent if you can. Dryer vent will work fine. And probably best. The deal is. This milk and chicken will rot in the jar. Shit gets rank as your crazy Uncle Ed's breath after drinking the end of a jar of pickles on garlic dish night. As it rots. Gas builds up in the jar. Give it a month or so. And this gas gets built up to the point that it shatters the jar. Guess what? Your neighbors have got the, the most disgusting fluid known to man dripping eye to their home. The smell won't go away for weeks. It will be so bad they will probably leave. This. Gentlemen. Is the chicken dairy bomb. Introduce yourself and apologize for blocking them. If you haven't met them. There's a good chance that they had no idea it was your car or they might have said something before they had it towed. There's also a good chance that someone else slashed the tires. No one wants the tension that comes along with hated neighbors and you really don't need to escalate what might have just been a misunderstanding. Or, you could just ignore them entirely and cut every wire on the exterior of their house. My dad ran a concrete company a while back. They had an issue over a driveway that they did for a company that was putting up a premier neighborhood. Anyways. The company was refusing to pay. So my dad parked his shitty old work truck in front of their show homes with huge sign in it saying XXXXXXXX Concrete is suing XXXXX homes over shady business practices. They settled out of court the next day. Hey. If you know it was them who slashed your tires. Call the police. If the tow company backs you on the fact that two of your tires were slashed, your neighbor's gonna have a bad time. Or you know. You could just go the passive aggressive route and prank them thinking you've somehow achieved justice. Also. You were definitely in the wrong parking where you did. The curb would dip down if there's a driveway. If you didn't think to look. Especially knowing they have a fence with a gate that opens to their driveway. That's on you. Not them. They had you towed. Which wasn't the wrong move here. Slashing your tires however. Was wrong and illegal. Lots of good revenge porn in this thread. But how about this. If you must insist on confronting them. Then go over and introduce yourself and apologize for blocking their driveway. Bring a plate of cookies or a case of beer as a peace offering. Explain that you like to be a good neighbor. Then leave your phone number and tell them to call if anything comes up. Now. Instead of feuding with deranged and possibly dangerous neighbors. You've made a new friend. Fact. Crazy people make much better friends than enemies. That goes double for Hollywood. 
as you never know which crazy person can get your crappy screenplay produced. This is a little late to the game. But the best thing you can do is use the legal method. Your tires were fine before they impounded it. After it was impounded. They were slashed. File a police report. Let your insurance know. At the very least. You can also contact a lawyer if you wish to either sue the towing company or the neighbors. Do not confront them yourself. Since it will probably only make them angrier. If you want to go even more legal on them. There may be some city ordinance that prevents them from building a fence like that. Contact your local zoning commission. Make a complaint. If you have a lot of time and energy. You could even join the zoning board to get it taken down, depending on where you are in LA. This may be a fairly easy thing to do. Legal revenge is the best revenge. Edit. I should add, as always, this is not legal advice. And I am not a lawyer, seriously. Contact a real lawyer if you've got a problem. My best guess on the toll lot issue is that they are, to some degree, responsible for the cars they tow. And that they would have a hard time convincing a judge or a mediator that the slashed tires aren't their problem at all. At my old job. I used to get calls many times a day on my office phone from one of those annoying SMS to voice services. It was always from the same number and it was often the equivalent of hi honey. Please pick up some milk on the way home and other personal stuff between a typical couple. It was pretty weird hearing it in a synthesized voice. I eventually phoned the number back and a woman answered. Denying ever having called or texted my phone. She sounded a little odd, possible crazy cat lady. Comma a few days later. After countless more calls I placed an advert online using her number and a throwaway email account. Technix DJ turntables for sale. Unwanted gift. Totally unused. In flight case with pioneer mixer and oil cabling. I work late so please call after 11 p.m. Price $500 the calls stopped. My brother had a problem when he was in grade school of a boy taking his dessert from his lunch out of his locker. Every day it was the same. And it was tough for my family because we didn't have a lot of money. But the culprit had less. He was also just a jerk. My parents are and were fundamentalists Christians. I'm an atheist today. But their faith inspired them to react as they thought Jesus would. They sent my brother with an extra dessert. And instead of waiting for the boy to steal my brother walked up to him and offered him a dessert just saying we wanted him to have it. Of course my brother never had his dessert stolen again. The best revenge is rising above the hatred with grace. I'm glad I've come across an appropriate place to tell this story. One time. A friend of mine had been being kind of a flake and a couple of my other friends and I wanted to do something to mess with him. This all occurred shortly before one of the Twilight movies came out and put an ad on Craigslist saying something like this Hey everyone. I have two tickets to a premiere viewing of the upcoming Twilight movie tonight but something came up and I am unable to go. Since I don't want to see these go to waste and there isn't much time. I'm giving them out for free. I'll be away from my computer all day today so if you're interested. Call me at Dart. Of course. We put my friend's phone number down here. It was a huge success. He got a little over 100 responses. Some texts and some calls. All from anxious Twilight fans. Before it got flagged as a fake. I'm actually still not sure if he knows it was me or not. But I felt pretty good about this one and plan to use this type of prank again in the future.